Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, I did say we'd do a bit of this, uh, another game. with This one I've been trying to look at for a while. It's called Space Tyrant, and it's supposedly kind of a... I don't think you can tell by the music, a little bit of a light-hearted B-movie-esque 4X game of sorts. I have no idea how to play it, and it is currently in early access, so we're going to find out together. Also, I'm dropping frames like a bastard right now. Might be down to going... I think it is Twitch. I think when LCS went live, the whole thing went to hell in a handbasket, so that's probably got something to do with it. So I'll keep an eye on the frame rate drops. If they get any worse, then I'll see about changing settings or changing server. Alright, let's have a wee gander. I mean, I could probably just figure this out myself. I'll do the first couple of tutorials and see what happens. Oh, they're videos. That always sucks. So, it's just click and move then. Alright, well that seems easy enough. I mean, I can't even see the uh, screen of the preview. Like, it's coming up as nothing. So, Twitch is definitely having some problems. I'm thinking I could probably figure this out myself. So, the combat... This looks a little bit Advanced Wars-like. No, it's not a mobile port at all. It's got nothing to do with mobile. Oh, it's got cards in it, apparently. Yeah, the vi the video here is low frame rate. So you play some cards and they sort of affect different parts of the battlefield and your empire. Oh, you can charge a cool death ray. Neat. And if you get crystal worlds, you can play more cards. You can get a loadout. Apparently you are not the Senate. Terrified plants often join the local Senate to defend against you. Yeah, you're a tyrant. Like, that's the whole point. So it's got, like, evil genius in space. Disrupt projects by capturing uh, the worlds as soon as possible. All right. All right, I'll figure the rest out as I go. Let's play it. So in Galactic Conquest comes very easily to a space tyrant. Warping minds, inciting petty wars, such schemes never fail to amuse, even a life as long as the stars. Interrupting this blissful reverie, an astral ambassador bursts in with a list of absurd demands. Stop meddling with vassal empires, respect galactic order, pay your space parking tickets. The sharp blast of my disintegrator cut off his blustering speech mid-sentence. Such insolence cannot go unpunished. Clearly the time has come to crush the Astron Imperium. Casting my mind across the stars of the Hoplite clans, I quickly found a leader who chafed at Astron law. Chafed? Really? Full of resentment, hate, and apparently steroids, he will be my tool to shatter the Imperium. Reveal your tax returns to the galaxy. All right, then. I like the art style. It's very, very, very stylish. Stylish style. World's best critic, everybody. All right. All right, then. Let's have a little bit of a gander, shall we? Hopefully it's as good as the... Yeah, we've already seen this. And we can't skip it. There's the first thing you should change. Oh, yeah, you can skip it in a little bit. All right. There we go. There we go there. Shows us another one. Yeah, so it is like a... It's a... There used to be a term a little while ago called beer and pretzels. Uh, it seems like it's a bit of a beer and pretzel sort of 4X game. It's a little designed to be a little bit quicker. So we go and fight them now. I'd like to see a 40k mod for this, but done comedically. Flicking on a ship will unleash its special power. And you can target some stuff. Otherwise, it'll automatically fire. While others require you target a specific spaceship, so you can put, like, shield on stuff. Ships can also be clicked to repair breaches in the hull. 
or fire again if inspired by the commander to do so. All right. So it's a bit involved. It's not just let them fight themselves. That's good. All right. So it's like charging up a version of an ability here. Click me. I would love to. All right. So it's, that's got regenerate. That's got regenerate. This has uh, volley. Volley. So you're using sort of... It looks like uh, the commander's energy can power the energy of other ships. Now nah, I'm waiting for Meteor Strike. Boom! There we go, right in the middle of it. Yeah, so it's a kind of nice, quick, real-time cooldown-based combat. It's kind of neat. Ah, uh, non-English native speakers don't know what beer and pretzels is. All right, um... Okay, I consider the idea that something that you would play that doesn't require a huge amount of focus. That's probably the best way to describe it. It also really... Are you guys seeing this on this end? No, I don't think you are. It's super smooth on the stream. It's just not smooth on the preview window for some reason. Okay, looks smooth on the stream. All right, that's fine then. Yeah, so I don't know what... Whatever your country's equivalent of a cheap sort of snack food... Almost like a food you'd maybe get in a sports stadium would be. So you'd have a pint of beer and maybe a packet of crisps. You know, that works. Or something like that. And this would be a game you'd play over that that doesn't require a great deal of thought. So yeah, that's that's what beer and pretzels games refer to. But yeah, it's still pretty neat, and I love the art style. Also, it looks like the uh, Space Tyrant's actually a rabbit. I don't know why I'm surprised by that. Yeah, so it looks like it, it all is all powered by the commander's abilities. So I can activate two volleys here, just for some extra fire. If I'm taking a lot of fire from these guys, they can kind of tank. Otherwise, I can just keep firing volleys of that. I can seal the whole breaches on that ship because it's taking fire. Pie and a pint games. I love it. That's great. Pie and a pint. And it looks like you get levels up now as well. That increases the size of your ships. Oh, I love and I love this uh, this text font choice. It's really cool. You got a big invade or terrify. Invasion exploration. Most planets have defense and must be invaded. Click to roll the invasion dice. If you're all high on defense, you win. Yeah, so it's gotta be a little bit of digital board game in it. It's not supposed to be complicated, evidently. Smoking and pancakes. You know that that no, that don't think that really counts anymore. Alright, looks like so you can get stuff that way. Okay. Click to invade by rolling a dice. There we go. Simple as that. Explore it. Among the strange and varied experiments of the station, you come across a great taste predator. I take it as a pet, obviously, because we just saw in the tutorial this was a good idea. So I get a new trait, pet. I don't know what that pet it actually does. It looks like it influences exploration events and gives unique options. You know, your Fallout style kind of thing. All right. So it looks like there's a research system we haven't quite got to yet. And we have one invasion dice. We could probably earn more. All right, onward. Our fleet goes. Oh, these guys are weak as hell. Might as well just accelerate the speed of the uh, the game here. Yeah, thankfully you can get through this really fast if you just got a weak, sh weak kind of ships, uh, a weak kind of fleet to go up against. So uh, again, it's super quick battles. You're taking your first steps in collective tyranny. There we go. Talisman. Could be a beer and pretzels game if it didn't fucking drag on as long as it did. But it fucking well does, so... Alright. Looks like there's probably a new tutorial mission. Wait, we just did this. Didn't we? I mean, you'd think I just did it. Oh, it's too many one or two. Okay, right. We didn't do it. All right. Yes, yeah, so I never understood one or one or one or two. That's a very like American term. We don't have that in the UK. 
Income and shipyards. Plants you control will produce credits, research, or crystals every turn. The credits are used to buy ships from the shipyard. To access the shipyard, select your ship and the shipyard button or double-click a fleet. Ship platforms rise with ships on them and then you buy what you want, basically. Drag them to make a fleet. And you can add ships to your surplus. Surplus must be emptied before exiting the shipyard. Okay. Alright then. Makes sense. So you can hire stuff. Oh, you can conscript a new lead if you're military, if you have enough money. So I have two crystals that powers cards. I don't actually have any cards yet. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is the shipyard thing. There we go. Let's click that. So maybe if I wanted to, I could buy a carrier and replace some of this stuff. I don't have a lot of space. So. Can't afford a cruiser. I'm thinking, like, maybe we add these to our surplus here and we buy a carrier. And then we take that as a fleet instead. And you can sell your surplus for money. Yep, that works for me. Alright, we're gonna send our new improved little fleet over here. Like I said, I love the, the art style is fucking fantastic. Uh, the font choice is really cool. Definitely gives me that 90s cartoon feel. It's super slick. Oh man, we got a. Looks like our carriers have a boarding party thing. It takes quite a lot to uh, charge it up. Let's use it. Alright, so we can pick a ship to board. Can we, like, steal it or something? Oh, the rabbits are, like, firing. Uh, fighting over it. I guess it doesn't matter because we just smashed it anyway. Alright, I think we have to go next turn in order to invade. Oh no, you don't. You just have to click the thing. Shockertope? What the fuck's that? Shocktopus! Oh cool, I have a new commander. Click to jump to this commander. Okay. So I have Stonehair, the rabbit, and... Okay. Does he like, replaced my guy? Or... Oh, it's because we haven't had turn yet. So if I had the money, I could... Oh, he comes with a fleet bollocks of it. Okay. So I could buy like another destroyer for him. And the Shocktopus fleet could go to one of these two. I think. Oh, they can like spin around the world as well before they go. That's a neat little bit of detail. Yeah, see so at the moment the combat is like very simplistic, but I don't think the point is to be fancy and complicated. And it does look like there's like definitely some interesting stuff going on with it that could happen later with more fleet combinations, so I don't think that's necessarily too bad. I wonder if with the uh, oh, with the invasion dice you only get to maybe like roll one a turn. No, you get to invade with every fleet. Okay. But obviously you'd want more invasion dice to hit trickier worlds. Oh, damn, I can't afford it. That's a fucking Hypnotoad. Kill the Hypnotoad. And I can't, of course. It's a shame. If I had money, I'd be able to have like recruited Hypnotoad. Never mind. Alright, so that's all we can do this turn, I think. We're not gathering any research just yet. That's probably like in the next bit of the tutorial, I guess. Cool, we got a card. Alright, so the crystals let you power cards, which are exactly where you'd expect them to be. You just play them. Yeah, I mean, we don't need explanation for that. Alright, so if we siege a planet, we can knock the defenses down to basically nothing. I mean, not that we'd really... Looks like we'd even need it, but... You head over there, and... We fight that, and then we use orbital bombardment. I think we just win automatically. Oh, look at these. These, these designs are so Bucky O'Hare. This actually is really Bucky O'Hare. That's what I just noticed. It's a lot like that. That's where I was getting the vibe from. Now, so it does die a little bit quick. I mean, the whole thing is supposed to be like a 90s tribute, so there's no surprise to stuff like... I mean, Hypnotoad was... what? Well, it's still in the 2000s. When did Futurama first there? It's gotta be early 2000s, right? So if I use Orbital Bombardment... That's going to make that basically... Yeah, it just it just actually completely took it over. It didn't even bother to roll it. 
I could should I enroll in the secret course we should we're evil there we go now we have secret shapeshifter police and that's a card plus three defense control planet lovely love the art I love the art it's reminding me of so many 90s cartoons 1999 wow I had no idea. I, th I thought it was 2000. So yeah, technically, it is a 90s reference. Although I don't know if the Hypnotoad was in season one. You know what? It counts. I don't care. All right. Let's head on over there and blast them with our carrier fleet. Oh, the fucking Space Hydra emote is perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't get any better. Oh, bring it on. You got nothing. You know, my guys aren't actually fighting, which is a bit weird. Oh, there we go. They they just, their torpedo launched. It looks like they just take a while. Regenerate, please. Thank you. Launch a boarding party of that. Yes, yeah, so all his commanders have different tactics and stuff, which is really awesome. This is great. You know, we always completely miss this because... And this is the the problem we've been looking at with the release schedule is that uh, Dodger was doing it last week, this week, that week on the podcast. I'd basically completely overlooked this, and I'm like, damn it! You know, I'm, I kind of I caught it on the way out, but if I hadn't, I'd have never bothered to look at this. And this is the continuing problem that we're trying to solve on the show. Like, it's not Dodger's fault. It's just there's so much stuff now that it's really, really hard to keep track of everything. And sometimes you overlook stuff which actually could be really good. So, it's... It, it sucks. Like, it's... Damn it. It's... So easy to... End up having that happen. I love this approach to 4X, though. This is, it really is Babby's first 4X. Well, again, if I hire someone to do it, we're running at the same problem. Because they, what, what? Because it comes down to what they think is worthwhile, and they could easily miss stuff too. And honestly, like, I, to I trust my co-host way more than I trust a random person to find good games. Oh, we could do research somehow. Okay. So we hit the button, and then nothing happened. Oh, look, a blade band experiment. It got us at planet research level. It said it's to unlock new technologies. Maybe I need, like, a research plant to do that? Because I... Oh, breakthrough in three. Oh, yeah, so it looks like we keep we keep having to work at it in order to get anywhere. All right, well, we can invade them again this time. Yep, I know. We need to get that planet. There is another possibility, which is crowdsourcing. We have thought about that, but again, the I, I don't like working with volunteers. I've told I've told you this many times that working with volunteers almost always results in poor things happening. Would a, a subreddit crowdsourcing thread every week might work? We have been thinking about it. Hmm. Call a bluff and attack. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So I, I stole the self-destruct system. Oh, so I got an antimatter mine reward card. Oh, that's sweet. Nice. So I can use that on a weak world. All right, we have space now, so we can add a few more ships to our arsenal. I think we just, we're going to go for a big carrier fleet here. I like it. Send these guys on. I think they took, a, they took a little bit of a beating, but I think they should be all right. I guess we're about to find out if that's true or not. It would be hard to do sub-only. There's just not really the system for communicating with subs any time other than live, so it doesn't necessarily work that well. I need to use that shield wall. I'm going to lose the ship otherwise. I think it's going down one way or the other. Ah, too late. I was hoping to use the shield wall. It's all right, it's bouncing off that now, so... Yeah, that's the one that should be tanking. But yeah, for a simplistic system, it's not actually that bad. Like, once you start mixing and matching abilities, it actually kind of works pretty well. 
And this isn't finished yet either. It's this is early access and it's already looking pretty good. Apparently, if you get a barracks, you can get extra dice that way. So I'm told. Um, oh, invading that's going to be tricky, and we don't have the. I should have held the invasion card for later. I'd have to roll a five. But of course, you can still weaken them that way. It's a fortified area. Oh, we got four, so we'll get an extra. It's not a mobile game, but it could very easily be one. That and I don't like the uh, there's a stigma attached to that, and I don't like it. You should really look at the game and judge on its own merits first. Especially if it's a premium game, it doesn't have a free-to-play business model. It's obviously mouse-controlled and clearly works the way it's supposed to, so I don't see why, even if it was a mobile game, it's very clear that if it was a port from mobile, it's obviously well handled. Throw them in the pain booth. Yes. Screams of the noblest serve as a warning to the others. You will likely not be challenged again. I, I just love being a fucking evil twat. It's great. I'll be taken out of context. By Tumblr or Fortune. I can never really tell the difference between the two fuckers these days. They're both equally easily triggered. Alright. To the crystal world, shall we? Deploy the fighters. Send Captain Ajax to bring back his body. There we go. To be fair, didn't they, like, invade each other at one point? So they're basically the same now? Because, like, one group went to one and one group went to the other. Like, Tumblr and 4chan are now the same people. That would be technically true, wouldn't it? Huh. Never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna post it on Kotaku UK. Ah, oh, don't even start with that shit. Rich Danton is an absolute twat. He's been a twat for years. Like, the guy hangs around on NeoGAF, believes everything NeoGAF says about me, including all the absurd rumors, starts some of his own, and somehow got control of Kotaku UK, which should be pretty indicative of how terrible Kotaku UK is. It's like, Lord took it as a paycheck. I get that. It's fine. You know, you, you do what you gotta do to get paid, and hopefully you can make a site better from the inside. Hmm. Activate the device. It's a thrumming sphere. Activate it! Of course! Oh. Well, I didn't do anything. Shame. It's like why I didn't blame Richard Lewis for working for Breitbart for a while. It's like, you... You take a job there and, you know, you think about maybe changing a place from the inside if you can. If you don't agree with what it does. And a paycheck is a paycheck, ultimately. You can't judge people too much for that. Alright, there we go. A bit of a bigger fleet now, and we can wait till next turn before we move. Yeah, I like how it highlights it when you've got nothing else to do. Like, it's a good user experience, very good UI. Is NeoGAF worse than Tumblr? I don't know, like... There's, they've got different problems. NeoGAF has this extremely insular, elitist attitude, because you have to register for the site, and then a moderator has to approve your account, which can literally take a year. They don't let anyone in that they don't like. They ban people very, very inconsistently, so it does tend to result in very, a very groupthink sort of attitude. And the problem they've got is they have a very, very tiny, tiny small number of people who are actually industry insiders, but the rest of them think they're industry insiders by osmosis. So they're like, oh, we're around devs, so we're devs. It's like, no, you're not, you're not, you're not devs. At, at all, actually. Hmm. Does this, uh, yeah, let's uh, explore it. Oh, cool. We got a new one. Well, lasers the heads of wild into the defense net. Absolutely. There we go. Cool. Yeah. So that made it much tougher. Yeah. So that's the attitude they have, and that's why, like, generally they're quite unpleasant. They're not terrible all the time. Like, I've read perfect, some perfectly good threads on there, and then just out of fucking nowhere, there'll just be insanity that comes out, and they ban people for stuff and then let people get away with a lot worse just because one of them happens to like be line up with the moderator's political opinion and one doesn't so it's you know it's kind of crap there's some useful information on there but there's often like more rumors that never turn out to be true than there are ones that do turn out to be true 
As for Tumblr, well, oh god, I mean, Tumblr is literally a site built on the concept of dogpiling. It's a, it's a harassment engine, quite literally. You know, the way that uh, reblogging and mentions and comments and stuff work on Tumblr, you can literally reblog something that you fucking hate and say, this is shit, go and tell them how shit they are, go and tell them to kill themselves, and you can just direct a mob directly to them. It is more effective than Twitter for dogpiling people, and that blows my mind. Cool, so if you complete the campaigns, you get more stuff, that's neat. Yeah, they haven't got these yet, but it looks like they're going to have three different uh, empires to play as. Uh, currently, you only have the Herplete Dynasty, which gives you access to uh, quite a lot of different stuff and unlockable cards and everything. This is really neat. This is uh, definitely, uh, it's like if I want a little taste of strategy and I'm like maybe tired and I'm not really feeling like being smart right now. This is a really cool game to do that around. Let's go to the Twisting Nebula, shall we? Your reign of Tyrion will come to an end of the Senate. Ever the Senate ever takes full control of the sector. Evidently, as I said, you are not the Senate. Ooh, if you get this, you get the Planet Smasher. Plus one siege while invading fortified worlds. All right, and you can unlock different commanders by the looks of it, and you have a loadout for that. So you have different decks to go into them, and you equip different artifacts and perks. Oh, it looks like if you beat the campaign, you unlock the second one, uh, and the third one's upcoming. All right, cool. Oh, yeah, accusing someone of dogpiling is now used to dogpile out. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Go to hell. Uh, there's, an, there's a couple of other forums. Like, there's an RPG forum that is really bad for organizing brigades as well. That is very much like ideological purity purging going on there. Yeah, like I say, like, you, you know read the useful stuff on NeoGAF and ignore the other bullshit. That's really the only thing you can do. Ah, if we win five floor space battles, we get a Dreadnought. That sounds great. We destroy one Space Master. All right. Oh, so that's a card that you get that will blow up a Space Monster. Okay. You get it by losing two Space Battles versus Space Monster. That's cool. Looks like we, we don't have any artifacts now. Oh, we do love this. This is, this is really great. I fucking love video games these days, man. I really fucking do. I, had a, I, I have honestly had a year mostly down to the chemo of just not wanting to play anything. And now I really just want to play everything. And it feels really good. I'm very happy. Which you'd expect that I'm not, considering, you know, I'm very active on Twitter at the moment and there's a viral drama video that's basically a bunch of fucking lies that's causing me to lose subscribers. But honestly, I think the obvious point is that anybody that would leave because of that drama video clearly never trusted me to begin with, because they would never believe some random with his bullshit over me. So the people we're losing are people we never really wanted to begin with and weren't really of any value to us. So cool, if we lose, you know, we lost 13,000 subscribers so far on YouTube. That's 0.4% of our subscriber base, it's basically nothing. But what I've noticed, which is interesting, is that over that month of people unsubscribing, the demographics changed a bit. So 25 to 34s went up and 13 to 17s went down. So I think that should very much demonstrate the kind of people that watch drama videos. It's kids. It's literally kids, which is of no use to us because kids don't buy Squarespace websites. Kids don't pay for audiobook subscriptions. Kids don't have credit cards to buy games online. They're just like not useful. So, is what it is. I accept it. I could go and make a video that shot down every single point that idiot made. Because he is just obviously a complete liar trying to get famous off the back of me. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, by, by making a video about him, like, he would basically win at that point, you know? He, he got the attention he wanted. He'll grow off the back of my fame. So, I'm not going to allow that to happen. Oh yeah, please, by all means, you know, bring bring on more drama. I said kids aren't useful in the audience. They're not. It's just the reality of it. We made our site and our videos for 25, 34 year olds. Basically like 18 to 35 is our primary demographic and even people who are older than that. Like, if you watch as a kid, that's great. But we're not marketing to you and our sponsors don't really have any interest in you because you're not the kind of people that buy that. 
It's like, you know, you're a makeup channel and you're marketing foundation and lip gloss and eyeshadow. And then you say, well, like, we're not really a channel for straight men. Like, yeah, we're, we're not. <laughs> we're totally not. So what do you want me to say about that? That is how every business works. You market towards the people that matter. You market towards the people that can actually pay you money and buy the products that you're advertising. And you don't market to the people that don't. What else is there to say? That's just how business works. And if you don't understand that, I don't think you're a capitalist. I don't think you believe in capitalism or even understand capitalism. So it is what it is. Yes, thank you for the quotes, you bastards. We're not a channel for straight. Yeah, thanks for that. Bastards. I don't think it's weird to see a non-fact become widespread anymore. I think you've seen over the last year and a half, people literally don't care what the truth is. They see something that lines up with their opinion and their belief and they latch on to whatever that is. Hack the planet! Hack the planet! Yes, we added a planet power. Cool, what does that do? Oh, so we could... Well, I don't know what that does, but apparently we can digitize things? Alright. Convert resource into a card by the looks of it, so you digitize it. That's neat. So yeah, the more tyranny we have, the better it is. We can use our death ray, and as unrest happens, we lose control. So we have to keep intimidating people, basically. Sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like the way to go. Let's get additional planet exploration on that. High noble of the world to great offense to an offhand remark. Throw them in the pain booth, obviously. I wonder if the results can be different. Because we've had issues with that. Remember when they did that with holy potatoes? And we're like, oh, we don't like this because the result is literally random. But if you set the same result for the event that repeats itself, you know what the right answer is. So, I, I, like, event systems are sort of broken in a way like that. Tech available. Yeah, but how do you get it? We have a research world, and it says tech is available. Ah, there we go. Now it works, because we have a research bay. Okay. Fast missile racks. This is currently locked. I like fa fast missile racks. Sounds good, because uh, our cruisers were firing really slow. And they can't handle firepower of that magnitude. Our shipyard, I guess, we don't actually have a shipyard here, I don't think. So I don't think we even get anything new. Yeah, there's a barracks over there that we need to go take out, because we need a... Oh, there is a shipyard here. Yeah, okay. So let's maybe get another cruiser. Like, throw away a couple of our frigates. It looks like you can level up your ships as well. So we get another uh, cruiser there. Because we did get the fast missile racks, so they're better now. Alright, what do we go after? We can go after the prison planet, which will get us militia. I... It's a doomed la- Oh, it explodes in five turns. Better grab it now, then. So we can get the benefit from it before it blows up. Oh, yeah, the good old we've destroyed the games. So, like I said, people just lie all the time. And there's just, like, there's no consequence for it online. If you're anonymous, you can lie about somebody that isn't anonymous, and there will be no consequence to doing it at all. Just none. Absolutely no consequence. It's incredible, really. That's what the internet has allowed to happen. You don't want my opinion on anonymity, I tell you that for a fact. Like, I think anything you say, you should have to own it. And anonymity, make sure you don't have to own it. I believe in the, um, the Euro- Europe- Europe higher currently has a thing called the right to be forgotten. Which is like, look, after a certain time, you said some bullshit online, you know, you can go to court and ask for it to be taken off of the place that's hosting it. I think that's good because, yeah, people say dumb shit, especially when they're younger. And this is the first generation that's really had to deal with that fact. So that does kind of suck, but simultaneously, I really think you should have to own what you say. And anyone that's a personality online has to own what they say. I have to own everything I've ever said. And that means that shit that I said eight years ago is still being brought up to this very day. God, that would suck for anybody else. It's like, hey, what dumb shit did you say? At any point. 
God, that would suck for a lot of people, wouldn't it? But they never really consider that. So, I, you know, I support that for anybody, including people who've said really horrible shit. There we go. Hack the planet! Obviously. Yeah, I... Oh, this time they got us upgrade. We could permanently increase the world output, which, for something that's about to explode, might not be good, but we're getting four research from this every turn, which seems really good. It, you can see, like, the modifiers for it. It's a doomed slow lab. Uh, it might be worth the 50 gold next turn to do that. You can... Yeah, yeah you can sue in the UK, like... Uh, People mentioned, uh, so just to clarify a couple of things. Uh, one, I, I did not break off my friendship with Laura. We were both pretty pissed, and I suggested that we should probably disassociate because the, the, the circles she hangs around with are obviously pretty damn intolerant, as we discovered when this happened. So, like, you know what? Maybe it would be best if we weren't friends anymore. Uh, but no, we, we sorted that out. You know, we're both really angry. I just woke it up and seen all the shit that went down, and she was really upset because she was being harassed and doxxed and shit. So, no, I, we're not, uh, we didn't stop being friends anymore at all. So, it's really kind of up to her. If she wants, I'm not going to hold it against her if she wants to disassociate because of these fucking crazy people. But, I, I, it's got to really suck when somebody respects somebody and then it comes along and you find out that person actually may be crazy. I know that will apply to some people with me, and I'm like, to me though, I've never tried to be an idol for anybody. I've deliberately avoided that. Alright, shall we head to the Crystal World and invade that? I'll use an orbital strike to weaken it. Sounds good. Oh god, it's a DJ commander. He has slow beats. Yeah, so I guess that kind of charges up. So, so now we have a more powerful regeneration field. We should be able to maybe outreach on their DPS. That's good. Yeah, we absolutely just annihilate them. Yeah, one we can do. Obviously, she wants to hold on to her job, man. Of course she does. People need to get paid. You need to pay your rent. That's that's always going to be the highest priority. You know, kind of people that are like, uh, oh, principles, principles, principles. Like, it. Welcome to reality. It's easy to talk about principles when you live in your mother's, mother's basement. You don't have to pay rent, you know? And the other side of it, the rumor that I was going to sue Laura. No. That never happened. What I did say is that I had a right to sue Kataka UK, which I absolutely do, by the way, under UK libel laws, because, hey, law graduate here did taught in second year. I know what defamation is in the UK. I'm very very much up on that. We did a whole three months on it. I know what's going on with it. I could absolutely go to the UK, Sukutaki UK, for libel and win. Easily. Because the libel law in the UK works this way. Space execution! Yeah. Or well, public execution. Oh dear, they didn't like me, so the planets rebelled. Oops! Better fight him. So here's the de here's the defamation law in the UK. Here's how it works. So basically, to violate defamation law in the UK, you have to have published a statement to someone other than the plaintiff or the plaintiff's spouse that lowers that plaintiff in the estimation of right-thinking people. That's the definition of defamation in the UK, and that's all you need to bring one to trial. There is a defense of absolute truth, but you have to prove absolute truth. Absolute. So, Rich Stanton's shitty unsubstantiated opinion would not be that at all. And he'd probably lose the case. But, in the US, you have to prove, if my understanding is correct on this, you have to literally prove that the person who made the statement did not know, no, did know that it, it was false. They explicitly knew it was false. And proving that somebody knows that something was false is very, very hard. There would have to be evidence of them publicly saying the opposite or something like that. So it's much harder to sue for defamation in this country. Plus, of course, there's, the First Amendment is a factor and there's no freedom of speech in the UK, whereas the First Amendment exists in the US. Yeah, I could sue Kotaku UK, and I could probably win very easily. 
Am I going to do it? They're not worth it. They're not worth the time. They're not worth the money. I've got better things to fucking do. And nobody listens to them anyway. They're on the way out, just like everything else. You know what? I, you know, I heard rumors about... Uh, from pretty reliable sources, actually, about sites like Destructoid's actual page views, and they're like, it's just meaningless. What they do now is meaningless, and companies are rapidly realizing it, too. They're realizing the people to give the games to are the people who do YouTube, the people who do Twitch, the actual influencers, the people that actually have real influence over people and power. And these other guys? Nah. They don't matter much anymore. I do, you might think that's sad, but ultimately, like, it's really a of their own digging. You know, they dug themselves into this hole. They have to dig themselves out of it. They didn't adapt properly, they screwed around, and that's the result. Alright, what do we do? Capture a creature, refine the or fuel hunt for sport. We should capture it. I want a pet. We got it. We have a pet now. Cool. We can hopefully eat people with it. So we got a crystal world from that. We have new tech available. So we do some research. Additional asteroids while there's the hole for HP. I like it. Let's get that. That's nice. This lab's going to explode pretty fast, but hey. We haven't got the death ray yet. We have to be dominate. And it's like, it seems like you've got to do like, because it goes down every turn. You've really got to work at this at speed. Oh, they've allied with the Senate and they've started a project to fuck with me. So I've got to do something about that. So maybe I should oppress people. There is an oppression option. Temporarily increase the production. There's a 30% chance of rebellion. What I need is another fleet, but I need 300 to get a new leader, which is really expensive. So that's probably not helping or happening really. All right, we've got to get over there and do something about it. I'm going to add two frigates to my fleet. There we go. I'm not going to buy any more ships. I don't think I need them. We can go hit this. Take it out. Yeah, quote mining's bullshit as well. <laughs> There's another bullshit thing. But you think, I don't, I'm not even worried about quote mining anymore because literally people can just make up a thing. Like... You didn't even, like, uh, someone, literally something that someone never, ever said can be put on YouTube and people will just believe it out of nowhere. Like, we have entered an age where the, tr it's, uh, the people call it a post-truth world, man. It's, it's a world where the truth doesn't matter. And all you gotta do, the only thing you can do is trust in your audience to not believe that bullshit. And, you know, I project I'll probably lose maybe 1 to 1.5% of my audience to that drama video and all said and done. And you know what? That's fine. We'll be okay. We can build that back. And that's what happens. You know, there's plenty of channels that have been hit by a lot worse than that. It sucks, but there's really not a lot you can do about it. YouTube won't do anything about it. Unless there's something blatantly illegal, and they're not an arbiter of who's defaming who. And they won't work. They, you know, they, they won't actually defend you on that. So, what is there to do, really? Not much. You can either respond to it, which is exactly what they want. They want the attention. And you'll make that you could make their career off the back of that. Or you just let it. You sit back and you just let it fester and it'll eventually burn itself out. Even though that video got very popular. You know, that video will go over a million views because people fucking love drama on YouTube. It doesn't even matter if it's true or not. Oh god, they're all allied against me and shit's going down. I'm gonna have to do something about it. I really should, like, try and oppress a world to make some more money. I'm just not gaining enough. And this is about- this is- still hasn't blown up yet. I thought it was gonna blow up. Oh, it explodes in one turn. Okay, so we're definitely gonna lose that. Alright. Thinking about invading, but I really need to hit these allied worlds. Problem is I don't have the right kind of card to deal with it. This is turning out to be pretty great, though. What does it require? It requires a friendly pl All these planets are friendly. I guess it's because we've already looked at them, maybe? Actually, none of these are even planets, are they? <laughs> Alright. I guess we're just gonna have to invade it. We need more dice. I should've hit the barracks for it. Any more news about the demonetization thing? It's... So, like I say, we did... Uh, I had a theory. 
because I'd been seeing a lot of the screenshots of people's demonetized videos. I'm like, is there a common theme here? And I looked through it and like, there actually is. And it's violent imagery and guns. And you might be thinking, guns? Like, how could they tell? Google can really easily tell. They have Im image recognition far beyond probably what, you, what you've uh, thought they did. So, let's discuss racing with the champion. There we go. Yay, I got some experience from it. I learned that le I learned something today. Education. It's wonderful, isn't it? What kind of army? Uh, like we probably have enough ships for this to not really be a problem. So hopefully we can attack next turn. Like I say, it's a uh, this is unfortunately slow. They have wares, five coin. Ooh, an artifact. Neat. I believe you can pick that next turn. Uh, next time you play around, so it's something that applies to your whole playstyle. Oh god, they're deploying militia, agitating, doing all sorts of shit, we need to stop this. Oh, they brought a much larger fleet with them too. And off goes my lab. Her Sims 4 video wasn't suitable for five- Five-year-olds don't buy things, they don't have any money. Why would that not matter? Why would that matter? Why can we not just set our videos to say this is not suitable for anyone under the age of 18? Because that is where all the money is. People over the age of 18. Why would that ever be a factor? Ever. Ever. Oh, they're so ridiculous sometimes. Weaponize it. Yes, yes. The plague bomb will be... Oh, that's super powerful. I need more crystals. Because I, I could throw it at that. I'd love to. We really do need to hit, like, that barracks world, though, I think. If we hit recall, we can get our fleet back to our home world. And we should be able to attack. This is... I'm really loving this, if you haven't guessed it. God, I like so many games lately, and it's great. Can you vote for the plague bomb in the next election? It would probably work out better. Oh my god. Alright. Yeah, so I don't know what activates this. Oh, you can activate immediately. Oh, and we just have their, sh their uh, ships. And yeah, this protection field now protects everything uh, uh, adjacent to it as well. So, we st they still have a lot of firepower. More than I expected them to. So let's throw some meteors at them. Get some uh, gun volleys going. See all the hull breaches. Looks like if you don't seal the whole breach, you can't use their ability again until that's sealed. It's a neat combat system, actually. It's not super tactical, but it's not boring either. Because there's still some decisions to make. Get the protection field up. We are taking some hits. Get another protection field up. Hopefully that stacks. What happens when the algorithm is wrong? They don't care. Uh, so, here's an interesting thing, though. So, I heard a rumor that whenever Google deploys what's basically an AI, uh, algorithm that uses machine learning, they always start it at the strictest possible setting. So, what it means is that we're getting shit on right now, but it will probably sort itself out over time. So, you remember when they did the whole, we're gonna... You have before you get monetized, you have to get approved thing. That kind of sorted itself out over time. Ooh, that sounds good. We should do that. Yeah, let's uh increase the survivability of our destroyers. Fighter warheads. Ooh, that sounds fucking awesome. Oh, so you get one or the other: sacrificial screen or fighter war fighter warheads. We'll go with that. So now I have a barracks, which, uh, it's a disarm- oh shit, it's a disarm barracks! So you loot- damn it, so it was actually useless. Oh well. So AIs get better over time. So that's my understanding of how it's gonna work, and hopefully, like, it's just something people have to ride out. We've had to ride out a lot of shit on YouTube. Like, I've been through a lot of the stuff like this, and it's- it gets better. It does get better. But you should never ever rely on YouTube as a sole source of income under any circumstances. That is a very, very bad idea. So, you know, don't ever, ever do that under any circumstances. 
because it's a very bad idea. All right, we're gonna go hit the crystal world. There's more crystal, we can play more of these cards. It looks, uh, like I said, um, I, um, I think I'm almost certain that there is currently a whitelist in effect. I'm going to go up to maximum and then I'm going to launch uh, a bunch of fighters. I'm almost certain that there is a whitelist currently in effect. And that is why some channels are being affected and some channels are not. And I'm pretty sure right now I'm whitelisted. And the thing is, why wouldn't I be? Like, I've been trustworthy with YouTube for eight years. If they don't trust me to handle big uh, advertising sponsors, Bearing in mind, I'm sponsored by Squarespace, who advertises at the fucking Super Bowl, and I'm sponsored by Audible, who is an Amazon company. So, why would they ever believe that I'm not trustworthy? Of course they wouldn't, would they? Oh shit, son! We can add a Dreadnought! And they have a big fleet, we should add a Dreadnought to our second fleet. There we go. We can't fit it. It's too big. It's fine. We can take away the destroyers and we can have a cruiser and a dreadnought and that could be our fleet. That, you know, that might maybe be enough to fight that ship over there. I don't know. Bear in mind, this is this guy's only level one, so... But if they attack us next turn, we're going to need that. All right, let's invade the Shattered Crystal world. Yes, there we go. There's definitely some, a lot of argument for hiring more people for YouTube, but simultaneously. Oh good, it's, yeah, so there is a different result sometimes. Simultaneously, a site the size of YouTube basically needs, I want to put uh, defense on this, basically needs machine learning. It. It can't, it, it's got, it needs some sort of algorithmic support. It's too big. You could hire hundreds of people and you still couldn't handle it. There'd still be too much shit going down there. Because there's so much, so many videos being uploaded. How could you ever possibly keep track of all of it? The answer is you, you can't. There's, it's not possible. You have to have some level of support there but you, you know what you need is the tier two support behind that when the automated shit does something stupid you need to be absolutely sure that there is a support team ready to answer that question for partners as quick as possible that's what they need and currently they don't have that at the moment there's just people speculating all the time because we haven't been told by Google what the fuck's happening. So what the hell are we supposed to do? Of course we're speculating. If they told us what was happening, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have to. But they don't seem to get that somehow. Oh god, this is gonna be a that's a that's gonna be a tough I don't know if my dreadnought fleet can take that out. Maybe. Might worth a shot. One way or the other, we need more money. Because right now we got mo problems. This is a really fun game though. It's a really nice light 4X. And it's funny too. It's got some nice jokes. Alright, here we go. 400% attack. Oh, the ship explodes. Oops. Oops. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Let's get the protection field up. Very right, nice. Yeah, Google needs transparency. That's its biggest weakness. It's been its biggest weakness for a long time. And it ain't any different. And the thing is, they've uh, the power of networks has basically imploded. And that was exactly Google's design. They wanted to... Because networks acted like unions in many ways. Yeah, they fucked people over like unions sometimes do. But simultaneously, they 
were also very powerful lobbying entities, and YouTube really didn't like that. So, unsurprisingly, they kind of broke the back of the networks, and, like, stuff like Maker is now, like, obsolete. So there's no one really to fight for YouTubers anymore. What we actually might need to do is unionize. Literally. Unionize. Which I'm not sure if you can do as an independent contractor. Probably not! Worth bearing that in mind. I wouldn't even know. I would not know how that would work. Well, I need to- the Gathering of Fleets would tap me. I could hit it with the Dreadnought. I don't know if we have the firepower. Let's, uh, I guess we're gonna find out, aren't we? We're gonna hit that fleet with the Dreadnought. It looks like a very small group of frigates. My opinion on Vidme is you basically can't make money off here, so what's the point? Like, there's never- there's never gonna be a replacement for YouTube. I think it, it is abundantly clear and people absolutely need to realize that. Cool, so we can actually make our, uh, thing invulnerable. And we can put shields up and hopefully the Dreadnought's gonna be able to fire fast enough and do enough damage to blow these damn things up. Currently, the Dreadnought hasn't even fired yet. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so it's a very powerful beam. It'll annihilate a ship in one turn. But it has to hold. We have to keep throwing these shields down on them. See all those hull breaches. We keep losing HP until that happens. And that's our ability. Geoburst blasts three ships on the same row. And we can't, every time there's a hull breach, it shuts down your ability to do that. So, that's something to bear in mind. Yeah, it literally is like a Death Star. We have to protect it, though. We can't lose our Dreadnought. It's damaged, but it's not dead. It won us the battle! Yes! This is... this is great. This is really cool. I like the fact that we're getting all these different powers, too. Yeah, we took our lab back. That's good. It's a genius pacifist lab. Now it's just generating 10 per turn, so that's massive. We do need more ships to reinforce the line, though. Oh, we can fire the death ray. We can actually blow that fleet up. Fire the death ray! Yes, there we go. So we put a big gaping hole in them. Hand size is exceeded. Play or discard a card. Okay, um... I, I think we need to hold on to that. We don't need extra research. We can get rid of that. This is awesome. Yeah, you're literally rabbits. Um, there's two other races, like Space Slugs and some other thing that isn't in the game yet. Yeah, I know unions are kind of worms. It depends. In America, like, there's a lot of um, anti-union sentiment because, obviously, some unions ended up being run by the Mafia, uh, and there was all sorts of horrible shit going on there. And you look at things like the Screen Actors Guild, SAG-AFTRA, and all the shit that's going on with them, and yeah, there's, uh, there's a bad, bad rep. But... If you came from the UK, you're probably more a fan of unions. Alright, we need to fix this fleet up. We're all over the place. We need more cruisers. i to buy two more. Because union is... Even though Margaret Thatcher did uh, screw up unions quite a lot, it's... Yeah, there's still a lot of unions in the UK that have quite a lot of power. And they protect people. But yeah, US unions, sometimes they protect people, sometimes they do really stupid shit. Or small ship shit. I don't want that. That seems fine. Bring up the shields. And once our torpedoes fire, we'll be in a good place. Speed up the battle a bit. There we go. This big ship is down. Yeah, these torpedoes are very powerful. It should be just fine. They keep spawning turrets by the looks of it. He's one of the space slugs by the looks of it. Yeah. European uh, unions within the European Union have quite a lot of power. And they mostly do the right thing. Mostly. Not always. Alright, yeah. This is great. I put together a little video on that. Hostages, hostages, yes. It's cool to roleplay a uh, space dickhead. There's a lot going on here. Oh, does it not? Please tell me this auto saves. 
Yeah, because if, if this is, you got the... What? No! No, no, no. Please tell me it's got a save the game option. That would be awful if it didn't have that. That is a massive omission. You can't be serious. I hope that just going to main menu lets me- if this- if it makes me restart the mission, that is terrible. Progress this to- oh, it's only you lose progress this to- oh, that's fine then. Okay, so it- yeah, yeah, I didn't read it. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, so you only lose this turn's progress. That's fine. That's fine. Cool. Yeah, this is- this is awesome. It's still in early access, but what it's got in- I, oh man, he even moves his hands when you do that. Yes, we're just very slightly raising the roof. This is great. Nidhogg's fun. This is fun. Games are fun. Games are awesome. Maybe focus on those instead of bullshit. Alright. I'm wrapping it up, folks. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I'll be happy to hopefully catch you tomorrow. Howler. Depending on what we're thinking of doing, I might even throw together a co-optional lounge for you or something. No promises yet. I'll have to see how I can get together. Very cool. I'll see you next time.